you verify? Yep, all good. Great. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this activity is about uh, FPGA tool chains and uh, specifically open source uh, FPGA tool chains. Um, so in this presentation, we're gonna um, have an overview of what's uh, available uh, for uh, FPGAs as an open source or, or free to use software. And then uh, there will be a comparison of the major platforms, uh, small uh, performance evaluation, and finally the conclusions. Now, um, the work done was uh, with this concept in mind. We would uh, take, we would buy um, some indicative uh, dev board. So we had a nice 40 in ACP5, uh, Cyclone 5, and uh, Xilinx uh, board. And uh, we would focus mainly on uh, open source software that runs on open source uh, operating system and then uh, also accept uh, free software that still can run on an open source uh, operating system because um, the, the main focus is to be able to work with everything open source. Um, so the first uh, project was Project uh, iStorm. Uh, it is used for the ice 40 FPGA, and uh, it supports most of the devices. Um, it relies on uh, other open source project, uh, Yosis for synthesis and the uh, next PNR for uh, place and root. Next PNR is uh, for those who are familiar with the Arachne PNR, it, it's the evolution of that. Um, we can see the supported uh, package variants uh, here. And uh, at the time uh, where this uh, review was done, uh, there was no support for the ice 40 lm Ultra and Ultralight uh, FPGAs. Uh, the next one called uh, Project Trail is focuses on the ECP5 uh, FPGAs. Uh, it's a full open source uh, project. Um, as you can see, there is some overlap on the tools uh, used uh, uh, on, on this uh, tool chain because uh, next PNR and Yosis also are also used to create part uh, to to take part from like the language uh, to end to the bitstream. Um, the project trail is uh, supports uh, most of the functionality, I think almost everything on the ECP five. So basic uh, I/O interconnects. Uh, Block RAM, um, PLLs, transceivers, and uh, it's a. This is also quite a complete project for uh, this uh, type of uh, FPGA. The the next PNR is the place and root uh, software that uh, is used by the previous uh, two projects and uh, there is also some th there's um let's say a future support for the xilinx 7 series uh, through the project x-ray so project x-ray is uh, in a very early state at this point uh, mostly focuses on uh, documenting the Xilinx 7 series in order to be able to build tools that uh, can generate bit streams for uh, the Xilinx series. Then there is um, a, there's a project called Simbiflow, which is uh, more of a, an umbrella of uh, all the projects discussed so far with an attempt to maybe create um, unified uh, interface for uh, all these projects. Um, we have uh, iStudio. iStudio also works uh, on the um, ICE 40 FPGAs, but uh, this uh, specific software is the only one 
that uh, actually supports uh, block design, like the commercial uh, packages available. And uh, uh, there was uh, there is uh, quite a bit of uh, development on this project. Um, there are like basic block structures for uh, doing stuff, and also it is extensible, so one can build uh, its own libraries. And uh, there's a growing number of libraries that work with this project, and uh, it's a very promising uh, step for uh, this family of uh, FPGAs. Uh, another approach for an ID, let's say, is the APIO. Uh, it's uh, it is inspired by by, by the platform IO uh, platform, and uh, tries to create like a more streamlined um, workflow for the ICE forty uh, development, and. Um, it is. Uh, it can work as a, as a standalone application, or it can also be part of the Atom editor uh, via package called the APIO ID. Um, it can support uh, simulation via the, uh, the project called GDK Wave. Uh, current at, at the time of the. Of this uh, activity, it was only supported on Windows, but there was um, an option to port it to to, to Linux. And uh, there is also a simulation and synthesis tool via the Icarus Verilog project, uh, as well as an HDL simulator using the Verilator. So uh, these are also many small projects that come together to in an attempt to create a more uh, full uh, development experience. Um, a bit on uh, the early stages at the time, but uh, they look quite promising. And then we move to the free FPGA tools. Uh, the tools involved the uh, uh, were the ones that could actually run on a Linux operating system. Um, for the Cyclone family, there's the Intel Quartus Prime Edition, which uh, can be used for uh, for free and uh, has the whole um, uh, workflow for uh, generating uh, FPGA applications. So there's um, analysis and synthesis, there's timing analysis, and uh, there's also an option to simulate uh, the design when it's uh, given different stimuli, and uh, it also supports uh, block design. Um, the Cubic Board project, it's actually a hardware project that do create an open source, uh, an open hardware uh, FPGA platform. Um, but all the files are uh, on a proprietary EDA. But still, it's an open hardware. Uh, what um, was explored on this project was the software that they said they provide for programming the Cyclone uh, FPGAs. But uh, unfortunately, this was proven to be just a, an Ubuntu virtual box uh, machine that had pre-installed the Intel Quartus software that was mentioned above and uh, was not an elegant solution because actually there was a, the size was something like 50 gigabytes, so uh, not very uh, convenient to have this. And uh, the final uh, software used was the Vivado. Um, there's uh, this is the official software from uh, from Xilinx. Uh, there's a, um, a web pack edition that does not require a, a license to run it. It supports block design, uh, synthesis, and implementation. It has a visual constraint tool and the editor. And uh, once again, you can go from uh, block design or uh, VHDL to bitstream. Uh, 
and it, it is a, a complete uh, software package. Now, um, very basic tool comparison regarding the capabilities. We can see that uh, this is for the open source project only. And um, we can see which uh, parts are covered and which are not. And uh, most of the functionality is uh, available for the High Storm and Trails project, that is the IS40 and the ACP5 FPGAs. Uh, we're project, project X-Ray for the Xilinx devices. Uh, as you can see, it's still in the, in the works. And uh, a more uh, complete comparison with the commercial tools, we can clearly see that uh, the commercial ones um, have uh, all the features available where the open source uh, tools uh, are a bit behind. Um, this is uh, mostly a penalty of usability for the um, for the open source projects, but uh, I think there's uh, there's work done toward, done towards uh, this way. Now, performance-wise, and this is quite interesting, um, we created uh, two really simple uh, programs. So the one was just a, a blinking LED, and then uh, there was a, a bit more complex uh, counter uh, program. And uh, the scope of these two uh, programs was to evaluate how fast its um, software could uh, go from um, VHDL to Bitstream. And uh, surprisingly enough, all the open source tools are, I would say, blazing fast compared to the commercial ones. Uh, if you look at the, at the chart, uh, the Vivado for a blinking LED, the first run, is uh, like three minutes where uh, for the open source, uh, it's something like three to four seconds, three to five seconds. And uh, actually, there was a presentation for the uh, iStone project. And uh, I remember the audience being uh, like amazed of having the bitstream ready in, uh, in four seconds. So this actually can help a lot with uh, development. Uh, to reduce development times. Yes, we are on the 12th yes. minute um, mark. Yep, and this is the these are the conclusions. Um, so, ICE, uh, open source uh, tool chains for ICE 40 and, CIPA, and the ECP5. Uh, I consider them to be mature enough uh, for code based uh, development. Uh, and can be used in the in projects. The APIO is a nice step forward for an ID uh, environment. Uh, we have the ICE Studio, which uh, promotes block design, and uh, but only for the ICE 40 family. I believe that this can be extended to the ECP5 since the the groundwork is uh, quite similar. Um, the Intel Quartus is, uh, as an interface was uh, quite straight, straightforward to use, but since this was inherited from Altera and Intel decided to do a refactoring of all the code, um, there were uh, situations where uh, you actually had to go into the software itself and uh, change names from Altera to Intel for uh, some uh, code to work their code. And uh, the block design, although it is uh, simple, it is not, uh, let's say, intelligent enough to keep your design tidy. So if you add or remove stuff, you always have to move around uh, connections and blocks and uh, make it nice and tidy. Vivado for the free non-open source uh, tools, I think, was the best. Uh, it has a quite intuitive interface and the block design is um, uh, let's say it self adjusts in a, in a in a very good way, and in addition there is a tool called Design Assistant that uh, helps uh, resolve issues and uh, provides suggestions 
for uh, improvement of your design. Uh, so for a full open source chain, chain, if you have to, if you, you're choosing a device based on the availability of uh, full open source chain, IS-40 and DC-5 are uh, good candidates. Um, and for more demanding applications, I would stay, I would say, stick with the Xilinx, uh, since there is something on the works toward, towards an uh, open source Xilinx uh, tool chain. Thank you. And uh, I'm now open for questions. You can find on the bottom the link for the repository of all uh, the work done on this activity. Thank you, Elias. Uh, there are already a couple of questions on the chat here from Alexander. Um, he says, do you also have tool performance results for larger kind of like real world designs? Uh, there was an attempt to create uh, an LVDS uh, to, to have the boards community get through LVDS so that it would be uh, a, a bit more challenging uh, bits and generation, but due to time constraints, this was uh, incomplete, so it, it wasn't, I wasn't able to test with all the platforms. Cool. Um, another question from Frank um, about would you have a suggestion for a SATCOM equivalent for a Hello World example and such open source tools in SATCOM, like for example, a simple demotivator or something like that? Um, there, there, there wasn't um, anything developed towards, towards this way, but uh, I think uh, it would be quite interesting to attempt to do something like this because uh, this will also demonstrate the limitations and the performance uh, differences of uh, tool chains. Cool. Um, there's another question um, about what are your thoughts on MATLAB and HDL coders? MATLAB and HDL coders. Uh, the HDL coders of MATLAB. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite familiar with uh, with that part, so I can't say anything about it. Okay. And next question from Fabian: um, Do the ECB5 or IS40 platform provide any high-speed serial interfaces? And if yes, do the open to, the open toolchain support them? Suitable for high bandwidth SDR bit streams. The IS40 um, had, if I remember correctly, there was an uh, inbound high-speed interface and. Uh, and uh, the output was done through regular GPIO. Uh, I found that during the, um, the attempt for the FPGA communication. The ACP5 does have a firm member for it because uh, input and output high speed interfaces. Okay, and uh, a final question that I can see here uh, by Bob. Uh, are the closed and proprietary tools doing optimizations of any type that the open tools do not uh, do not do, which can account for the significant significant portions uh, of the slowdown that we see. Um, the optimization part, um, there were some optimizations done, but uh, there was like a licensed uh, part where you get like the, the good stuff for optimizing the design or not having to uh, build everything on Vivado. So there, there were some options where uh, if, you, if you paid for a license, it would accelerate the development. Um, so there, there are some, uh, some differences uh, there. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to compare the the bitstream of the commercial and an open source uh, tool for the same um, for the same device, uh, because at the time there were some uh, problems uh, running this on 
on Linux for the S40 and the S85. And uh, so there is no, no real metric on that. But uh, yeah, it, it would be interesting to see if there is uh, which one would be better. Okay, and with that question, we are just hitting our 20 minutes mark and would like.